Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Yemi Siegpaye. Female genital mutilation, FGM, also referred to as female circumcision or cutting, is a traditional practice that cuts across class in society and is a practice that has significant social and health implications for girls and women. I had a conversation with a gender specialist from the United Nations Population Fund on the impact of FGM. But up ahead... <laughs> Health practitioners and gender activists have condemned the practice of female genital mutilation. The next report brings you the perspectives of victims, activists and experts on this age-long practice. Take a listen. Several communities in Nigeria still practice female genital mutilation. A recent study by the United Nations Population Fund says the practice is common in Oshun, Oyo, Ebonyi, Ekiti and Imo states. Traditional birth attendants are employed by parents to either cut or mutilate the genitalia, often with a knife or a pair of scissors. The practice is deeply rooted in some cultures, even though experts say it has no health benefits for women. <laughs> Female genital mutilation um, is actually the partial or complete removal of the female external genitalia for non-medical or for cultural reasons. Um, it comes with it several complications. Um, the immediate complications may include infection, pain while she's passing urine, also her likelihood of having um, obstructed labor. Obstructed labor also, if not managed um, promptly, may result in vesicovaginal fistula. Some victims of this practice say they underwent the procedure in their preschool years. What we have met as our culture, because when I was young, they circumcised me. Hmm? Though I don't even know the time, but they circumcised me. People brought uh, ladies, uh, ladies to us to circumcise, but we refused because we were warned not to do it anymore. But as our knowledge, as far as our knowledge, we know that those that rejected it, female circumcision. They know what they mean by it, by not doing it. Although FGM is outlawed in many countries around the world, Nigeria's position on this matter is yet to be clarified. Activists say the practice is a violation of fundamental human rights. The practice is largely done when women are children and therefore they have no say. Most of the practice in Nigeria, as the NDHS has, uh, data has shown, men, women and girls undergo FGM below the age of five, majority of the women and girls. So what are you talking about consent here? Who is talking about consent? How can a girl of five, uh, five years or even under five years give consent? It is totally, uh, you cannot even, it is irregular even to begin to think about consent in this case. And for older women who have FGM performed on them as a rites of passage, some of them don't give consent. I know particularly of somebody who, had, who fought gallantly against being uh, mutilated at her, uh, when she was having her first baby. And because of that, she, she's now suffering the, 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 the ick, ick, as to say, of her family and her relations and her husband. And she's also, um, she's, she's also uh, you could say that her marriage also is uh, under attack, so to say. So nobody subjects herself willingly to, to, to pain, to harm. Do you know that FGM is painful? FGM is harmful. FGM has no social benefits whatsoever. And you know that the human rights of persons also include the right to be free from torture, to, to the right to bodily integrity. So if, the, if, if uh, the, the, a girl or a woman has to have, give consent to what happens to her body, and at that age, and if a girl is being caught, there is no issue of consent here. Because even the age, at that age, she cannot give consent. What does she know? What does consent mean? 
as a matter of fact. There are no protection systems built within the laws to, to protect people that report, uh, that report this, uh, this FGM. Because you know since it's a social norm and, and, and happens because with the consent of the, of the members of the society, anybody who dares to go against it may be, may be, may be brought under the justice to face the, 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 you know, the anger of the community where he or she lives. The International Day of Zero Tolerance for Female Genital Mutilation was established by the United Nations to end FGM. How far Nigeria is prepared to go in terms of awareness campaigns and legislative reforms is yet to be seen.